All right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome again. I misplaced the uh, tree giving ad, so awkward black <laughs> screen, but here we are. We uh, we are here today with Snoop Hogg TV on Stream Key. Welcome, sir, to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing well. What's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. Snoop is a new, brand new, brand spanking new True Gaming sponsored streamer after many rounds of applying. Um, oh, wow, great. Damn. <laughs> no, no, that's good. Started I like saying right. that because uh, people who apply a lot of times have a better chance of getting in. So no, uh, I just like to give people a little hope there. <laughs> but, Persistence is key, chat. Yeah. Father Green every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret. Uh, don't do that. So yeah, this is Stream Key. Uh, every week we talk with streamers on Twitch about ways to improve and to grow as a streamer. And this week's topic is branding. Snoop, as you can see, has branding all over his setup. So I think you can guess what his brand is. Uh, so we're breaking down his brand as well as how to build your own brand on Twitch, how to iterate on it, how to change it, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it'll be a really kind of specific episode topic and I hope you guys get a lot of value out of it. But uh, yeah, we'll take questions at the end of the show. So if you have a question for Snoop or myself about branding, about Twitch in general, hold that till about 1240 and we will get to it, I promise. But uh, so Snoop, do you quickly want to just give a rundown of yourself as a streamer, what you are all about, uh, maybe like a little bit of an overview of your brand? We'll break that down a little bit more later, but. Okay, yeah, so I'm Snoop Hog TV. for those of you that don't know me. I variety stream on Twitch. I've been doing a lot of single player stuff. I kind of skimmed away from the BR. But we are all about America here, and true gaming, of course. But <laughs> all of it. <laughs> we have everything and anything there is that I can find that has red, white, and blue on it. It will be here somewhere. <laughs> and more and more comes. The only reason I don't have a flag is because I don't know where I'd put it at this point. You have two flags, honest. though. <laughs> well, I have, my, I have my little flags on the back of my chair that keep yeah. falling off, by the way. I need, like, industrial tape. <laughs> But, That's awesome. Even your walls are blue and white. I can see that there. You yeah, just need which, like red blinds or something. It's it, seriously, <laughs> I actually, when we bought the condo, this room was already designed like this. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. <laughs> That's great. Awesome, dude. Uh, what kind of games quickly do you like to play or what, what is on your stream most of the time? Um, lately, it's been a lot of uh, single player story QTE stuff. So like Detroit Become Human, we just finished Beyond Two Souls. We started Heavy Rain last night. Mm. We're going to we're going to be doing The Last of Us, which kind of ventures off the QTE to like action RPG, but that sure. kind of category of stuff. Lots of single player stuff, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, so another question I'd like to ask everyone who comes on the show, your name, Snoop Hogg or Snoop Hogg TV, where did that come from? And do you have any weird usernames before that that you ditched? So you'll, you'll appreciate this a little more than most because you're an Overwatch guy. But <laughs> when my stream started, I played a lot of Overwatch. And that's actually kind of what got me into streaming. And I always played Roadhog when Roadhog didn't suck. Mm. <laughs> um, so I wanted a cool pun on in play on words on Roadhog. So uh. I figured, you know, Snoop Dogg, Roadhog, it worked out. But of course, Snoop Hogg was taken on Twitch because sure. you know, what generic name isn't taken on Twitch. <laughs> so I originally had 203 after it, which was my area code. Come find me, chat. How are you? Um, <laughs> but Doc, so <laughs> yeah, right. So that was my area code, so I had that for a while, but then that just looked dumb. So I finally went to TV, but when I first made my Twitch account in like 2015, I didn't stream, I just watched, and I went through several ridiculous usernames. <laughs> my my IRL name is Devin, with an I, because I'm better, and I'm closer in the alphabet than the O that Velik has. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I used to have like DVON2477 or some ridiculous nonsense nice. like that. Like I was still in middle school. Of course. Because it was like every email I had since then. So I finally moved away from it and kind of branded towards the Snoop Hog. Sure. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was a pun on Snoop Dogg. That shows you how much I yeah. think about that stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a cool story. Um, I guess you ditched either Roadhog or Overwatch as a whole since then. I don't know. So I played up until season nine. I finally, I, I climbed from, I came from console playing Overwatch. So it was definitely a culture shock to come to PC because mm -hmm. I went from plat to bronze. <laughs> oh, yep. That's how it goes. And then I climbed up over this, I started in like season four on PC and I climbed up to, I think 
high gold, low plat last season, but it was just so they started introducing Brigitte and in the knockback and all oh, that. Yeah, just, that's when I quit I wanted too. Nothing. I wanted <laughs> nothing to do with it. I was like, all this game is making me do is scream at my computer every day. And uh, as much as as much as people love to get me salty, when I get that salty, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, man, I, that's a whole nother conversation, I think. But yeah. uh, I miss. And, and I'm not rich like Summit One G, so I can't go around punching monsters for views. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> don't don't follow that advice, chat. Bad advice. Um, all right. So uh, moving on here, the warm ups. Uh, what are either your most or some of your most memorable moments streaming on Twitch? Whether that was you streaming or just being a part of something on Twitch. Um, I mean, to be honest, and not just saying it because like you guys sponsor me like that, it was stream from you guys where this, I got to. Sorry, you cut out a little bit there. What'd you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll move closer <laughs> to my mic. Here, I'll turn my game up a little. Um, the Mission 22 stream with True. Oh, easily, okay. Hands down. Probably one of the most fun streams I've ever had where I got to do the overnight. I lucked out and, you know, worked it out where I was able to stream to True before being sponsored. And I had such a great time. And that's actually where a lot of the branding really took off for me because hmm. I wanted to make it memorable and I wanted to stand out. Sure. When I did that stream, on top of being able to get everybody hyped enough for, you know, Mission 22 is very America. So right. I figured the more America hype I could bring, the more money we could raise. And that, the Mission 22 charity crushed it. Yeah, that was but great. I, I don't remember, though, I have to look back if it was the suspenders I got for that stream or if it was my my American flag oh, bow tie. Just all the dapper <laughs> American things you could find. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that was easily probably one of the most fun streams I've ever had to do. And I wasn't even remotely, I think I had just gotten turned down for sponsorship at that point. Mm. Maybe like a month before that. Sure. Yeah. For anyone who so, doesn't know, we did a, a big charity stream uh, over the whole weekend for Mission 22. I think it was earlier this year, if I remember yeah, right. I think it was like March. Yeah. Um, and usually we'll, we'll have the sponsor streamers fill it out and then usually like the midnight slots or the really tough to find slots we'll pull in the community to help fill those and snoop graciously volunteered to help us fill that so uh b big props to him for that and clearly you enjoyed it anyway so oh yeah worked absolutely out. i love being able to do charity stuff for sure awesome we'll definitely be doing more of that soon we've been done one in a while so stay tuned for that guys and affiliates will be involved too we'll get into that soon Anyway, uh, let's get into the main discussion here, which is branding. Um, mm -hmm. And first of all, I want to define what branding is on Twitch. What we mean by that, because I've talked before about the difference between identity and branding. So I want to get your kind of thoughts on what you mean by branding, um, either for yourself or just for Twitch as a whole. So my my personal take on branding is when people come in to my stream, at least the first thing they see is, you know, the glasses, the hats the flags, the suspenders. You see the America in my stream as soon as you come in. Even when you look behind me and you look past me, you see all the stuff that I have in the background. Sure. That is my brand. I brand, I mean, obviously I can't, you know, TM America because, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have, I have made and built up the brand because, you know, I, I, I am a true supporter of my country. I love my country. I'm a big fan of, you know, our military, our law enforcement, everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, it's nice to be able to find a way to support it. And that's my brand on Twitch. My identity on Twitch is who I am on stream because I can tell you that if I meet you in person, I'm going to be the same exact way. I mean, I might not be screaming about America all over my face in the middle of a crowded <laughs> room, but you know, I'm the same exact way I am on stream as I am off. You know, sure. you're getting the same person. I might not be super, you know, amped up the whole time, but I'm definitely the same kind of personality. I'm going to make the same jokes. I'm going to break stones the same way I do on stream. I mean, it's everything is the same way. And that I consider my identity on Twitch. Sure. Like a, a good friend of mine who will remain nameless for certain reasons right now, but we were talking yesterday about this and um, he was saying how you're, you could put my face on a t-shirt and people would know who I was. But if you put my logo on a t-shirt, people might or might not. So while my brand is my channel, as is my logo and everything else, my identity is what people know me from, from Twitch. Sure. Yeah. So branding sounds like, and I agree on this, is more about like visually what's on the stream, um, whether that's literally like on the camera in your case, or it could be uh, your your graphic icon logo or banners or panels, overlays, all that stuff working together to form a theme basically for your graphics. 
Um, and then identity plays into that. They're very hand in hand, but the, it's mm-hmm. for the for the um, purposes of this discussion, it's important to, to understand the difference between identity and branding. So today we're talking yes. more about the the graphics, the images, the the look of your stream overall, basically. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah. I just want to get that established first. Um, to break that down a little bit more, let's talk about your brand. So I mean, you've already described what it is, basically, mm-hmm. uh, just revolving a lot around America. Mm-hmm. Where did that kind of come from and how did it grow over time? So I have been a military law enforcement family my entire life. So mm-hmm. I grew up, you know, my grandfather was a cop, you know, my brother did reserves. I did, uh, you know, I do dispatch now, police, fire, EMS, but I did the other side of it for a little bit. So, I, you know, it's just always been a service family. And when I started streaming originally, like if you go way, way back into my older streams, when I very, very rarely streamed, even then I had like digi camo overlays that looked like garbage and looked <laughs> like they made they were made in paint. But, you know, I always had this kind of idea behind it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And when I came to Twitch and I decided, you know what, I really want to make a push. I want to see if I can actually do this and have fun with it and build a community. So. I had decided to, I was trying to think, trying to think what, what I could do to not, not so much stand out. I mean, stand out, you want to stand out, but to something that's maintainable to share. So like you look at a doctor disrespect, doctor disrespect is awesome, but that's gotta be so much work to do that. You know what I mean? And to keep that persona on every time you go to an event. And I mean, for me, I show up to an event, all I have to do is throw these on this and this, and I'm good. You know, I don't have to act like, you know, I drive a Lamborghini and all this shit. <laughs> but so I, I landed on America and the whole reason what inspired me and it was so dumb was if anybody's seen Eastbound and Down, there's the scene where he's pitching in Puerto Rico and he comes out to the entrance song for Hulk Hogan, the I'm a real American <laughs> song with fireworks going off and this big American flag running behind him and he's pretending to play guitar and no one there speaks English and everybody's staring at him like he's out of his mind. And I don't <laughs> know why that resonated with me, but hysterical. So I said, you know what? I can do America theme. I was like, I can incorporate that song. And I used to play that song every time I started my stream. And then I was like, I need to, I need to not do that because I'm tired of hearing it. <laughs> so now it's my, uh, I forget if that's my sub or follower alert. Because it's it's that and uh, proud to be an American. I sure. Forget which one's which? <laughs> but um, everything. I will tell you that everything branding wise on my stream has something to do with America, with the exception of the sub masks, <laughs> which I have rotated one one America mask in there now. One. Because I, I well I found one. I couldn't find America <laughs> mask. I got you. So <laughs> do you know when in basically when did you start really pushing the america stuff how long have you been in this kind of brand uh, as opposed like, to like the the camo stuff you were talking about before maybe november december okay year, so about six months okay yeah so i mean you've you're almost at half a year now or over half a year now so you mm-hmm. like you said it's something you can are you're okay with having that image on twitch for a long time um yeah. see to me you know you said it's easy to put on a hat sunglasses suspenders whatever That'd be tough for me, just, I, I don't know. But like for you, it works. So I think that's important to remember. Um, mm-hmm. Finding something that, like you said, you can sustain long-term on Twitch and not get burnt out on, whether that's an opening song or uh, wearing a mullet and sunglasses on Twitch every time you go live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you wear the sunglasses, but not the mullet, so. Um, but yeah, I think that's a cool kind of history of how you iterated on your brand over time and mm-hmm. uh, Is there anything that you're kind of thinking of moving forward now? Now, you know, continually just adding things to your stream? Um, Um, I'm I'm just looking for new ways to incorporate it. Like, I mean, I just changed my intro screen a little bit and stuff like that. But now it's hard to... So where it's great, it also limits you sometimes. Mm. So I see awesome intro screens all the time. Like White Shadow Stream, for example, where all the shit comes flying in and it looks really (laughs) cool and stuff like that. Or like even the True Stream when it starts... So it's tough for me when you're sitting in that starting soon screen. Mine is very unique and it's been that way for so long now that I've made little changes to it where I was able to change the way my name looks and that kind of stuff. But it's now, if I change it, it still has to stay on brand. Mm. So it's kind of tough because I have to find a way to make it look red, white, and blue 
or have some kind of an American flag in it or sure. something that represents the brand. So it kind of limits my ideas on stuff that I would think about doing. Right. You know, so while it definitely has its ups, it has its downs. So anything new, it, it takes me a little while to implement new things into the stream because I have to figure out how to make it fit the brand on sure. top of how to implement it. Yeah, it's tricky to make sure everything fits under that banner, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you've said that you feel like you can hold this long term on Twitch, right? But do yeah. you ever think about the fact that maybe like your viewers would get tired of it or um, have they said that they love it and continue to love it? Or what's your See, experience there? So even my international viewers love it. Hmm. Because, so like if you follow my stream, I have a whole spiel I go through every time. I, th I thank you for following. I thank you for coming to True American Patriot. I welcome you to the revolution and I tell you to enjoy your freedom while you're watching my stream. So I've had people where they'll follow and they're like, oh, I got on, <laughs> you know, Canada or I'm from the UK. And I tell them all the time, you're an American patriot in spirit. <laughs> so you're fine. And I mean, people enjoy it. I, I, sure. I have never gotten a complaint about the amount of America on the stream. Mm. I, I, I've had, you know, some troll accounts come in where like people are like, oh, those flags offend me or something like that. And then, you know, I, I have a great time to troll. So I don't know why people get so bad. <laughs> Unless you're dropping like racial slurs in my chat where you're just going to get banned anyway. Sure. Trolls I have a great time with because a lot of the time their material is weak and you mm. can help them improve to troll better on Twitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but that's a cool thing to think about, I think, is just basically, uh, so, you know, you're six or seven months into streaming. Do you think, okay, Two parts of this, right? So one, when you hit like a year or two years of streaming, A, do you think that um, potentially viewers could kind of lose interest in the brand since it's very flashy or just from seeing it all the time? Um, and then B, basically the, the core there is, do you think it's important to kind of refresh your brand a little bit from time to time? And basically how often do you think that would be? So for the first part about people getting sick of it, the beauty of what my brand is thankfully and what you see with a lot of brands is you can always dial it back sure so like i i have the hue lights that flash red white and blue when people follow and sub and that and you know when we do charity events or big time streams normally they're going the whole time and a lot of people love it and a lot of people don't use them don't know what they are i should be sponsored by nano leaf at this point because the amount of time <laughs> i've pushed their shit. but um you know it's just people enjoy it but at the same time I can reel all this back. Mm. I can still keep my brand while dialing it down. So mm. if in two years from now people are, you know, starting to dwindle off and I'm hearing that, you know, the lights are too much or it's too much going on, it's too crazy. I mean, everything in here I can pull down. You know mm. what I mean? The flags, I can wear the hat all the time and even lose, you know, my <laughs> sunglasses. It's, yeah. Everything is very interchangeable and easy for my brand. That's the upside to it. I've, I haven't done anything where, like, I don't wear a mask every day the whole stream. Right. So, you know, if you come in here and I wore a hog mask every day, it's kind of hard to walk away from that brand because that's, that's what you are. That's become your identity on top of it. Right. It's true. You know, and as for refreshing, the sh I absolutely think you have to. Mm. I have, I mean, even if you go back six months to now, and look at my overlays, I have, I much like every other streamer that starts out, thinks overlay everything mm -hmm. and gameplay and camera. And that's, you know, very little amount of the stream. And <laughs> as I've learned, and as I've, you know, grown, I have eliminated 99% of my stuff on my screen. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, my thing now is it's very minimalistic, but it's very branded in compared to, and that's helped with me learning how to use After Effects and different third-party programs to be able to create that kind of stuff. But originally, like even my most recent logos, like I was, MPI created my intro video, which big shout out to him. If you guys need <laughs> any intro work done, do it. Or any video work. But so you look at some of my old overlays and they were all over the place. I had stuff all over my camera screen, subs, follows, donations, this, that, the other thing, you know, my name. Then I dropped it to where it was just the border with my name and then everything on the bottom, you know, mm. subs, this, that, and the other thing. And now I've been able to condense it so much that it's the small bar around my camera every, I think 30 seconds, I forget what the loop is. My name pops out of the bottom of it for like 10, 15 seconds, then it goes back up. Hmm. And it's very simple, it's very nice. It's eye-catching, but it's not distracting. Sure. And now I just have the uh, the Streamlabs, the list program. So when people donate or sub, it pops up above the camera, it scrolls right. up, 
you know, it's there for like 10 seconds and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, and I, I acknowledge the shit out of people. So (laughs) that's a thing that's kind of on you. If you, if you need the overlay, I mean, it, it all depends on the type of person you are, the type of streamer you are. Competitive streamers playing Overwatch and stuff like that where they have to focus. You might miss stuff until, you know, the match is over and then you can go back and, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sure. Where my thing was, I don't need the overlay because a lot of the stuff I do is single player. So I, I finally looked at it as I didn't need all this clutter on the bottom with every new follower, every because I will make it a point to stop i will turn i will do my spiel i will look at it subs donations whatever it is follows views and i will talk i also Mm -hmm. like the singer player because i like to be able to interact with the chat as much as i can sure so yeah those are all really good examples of ways to um specifically sounds like a lot of overlay stuff so just making Mm -hmm. small adjustments to your overlay and just learning like what you like about uh the look of your stream over time that's Mm -hmm. super important i totally agree um, do you think that sometimes you need to basically just like reskin something that's already working, whether that's like, you know, you love your panels, but they feel kind of bland now and mm-hmm. you want to refresh them. Does that ever happen? I, I recently did that with my panels. My panels were, I had made them probably six months ago and I think I redid them maybe two months ago. Hmm. They were, they were pretty, for those of you that use Photoshop and I'll try to explain what it is, but I used a gradient of red, white, and blue, but I had no idea what I was doing at the time (laughs) and I'm eating my beard. I'm sorry. Um, But so it was like a streak across the middle and they looked so boring. So it was just a white box on both sides in the middle. There was a streak of like red and white and blue. So the not too long ago, I actually revamped all of my panels and they're very simplistic. They're red and blue with just a logo because again, with the anti clutter that I'm, I I include that in my panels. So, A lot of people will argue this with me, but I don't have an about me on my Twitch page. Mm. And the reason is that nine times out of 10, people are not coming in there and then the first thing they're doing is scrolling down to the about page. They're looking at you and they're trying to interact with you. And if they want to know about you, they're going to add. Yeah. You know, so my panels literally, there is nothing typed (laughs) out on my panels. It is literally just what they are in direct links or just... You know, so like my true gaming panel, for example, it's the true logo, says true gaming, you click on it, it goes to the website. Sure. You know, my Instagram panel, same thing, it just says Instagram, you click on it, goes to my Instagram. It's very simplistic because 99% of the time, uh, people want to see you. Yeah. So I don't stress the panels too much, but it's also a reflection of your channel. Sure. Yeah. When I think... you have 42 things pinned down there and it <laughs> says all this crazy shit, people notice that after yeah. a while. They might not notice it at first, but eventually, like wow what the hell's happening though <laughs> yeah there's a couple things there i think one like you said it's good just to refresh just to catch people's eyes again and like the, that's something that you can talk about in the stream like oh new panels those look kind of cool um mm-hmm. so that's always good and then I, I like what you said about basically not falling back on your panels like you know you don't have an about me um this isn't really a branding thing but i like that in the sense that it gives you a talking point as well mm-hmm. right because you can't just say like well read the panel if you're gonna figure it figure out about me or whatever um read the panel if you want to see this instead you can just tell people um and while at some point it doesn't scale to thousands of viewers um when you're small and growing i mean you should take every chance you can to talk to people right so Mm -hmm. makes sense uh yeah and i the the, just on to touch on that branding point of it though is i also ask for feedback mm. so anytime i change something i will ask the community while they're there i will ask them you know do you like this? Is it too much? Is it ridiculous? I like feedback because to be honest with you, at the end of the day, I'm not the one looking at it. Right. I I don't see my overlay when I'm playing the game. I don't, I don't notice it other than when I peek over at OBS to make sure everything's not falling apart. Right. You know, I I know it's there. So there, you know, the community is the ones that have to look at it and grant you, not everybody's going to like everything, but I try to take the majority of answers of what's going on. Sure. And, implement that into branding it was the same thing with uh you know i I wear masks for subs and technically i guess that's part of my brand at this point because it's it's well known that if Mm. there's a sub there's going to be a spin for a mask but you know even that it's kind of you know do you guys want to see more which mask do you hate which mask do you like because Mm. each mask comes with a song and most people hate what's the fox say that's all another story (laughs) (laughs) that's kind of a cool topic actually have you ever had uh, a piece of your branding, it could be an overlayer panel or like a mask or something that like you really loved and 
uh, the brand was really good for you, but then the stream hated it or mm -hmm. disliked it. I, yeah, I absolutely have. Yeah, I used to have a uh, was it my Stinger transition? I think it was a Stinger transition, which I loved. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, and it was this flag, <laughs> and it made this wild noise, and all, that, and people hated it. <laughs> they were like, "Why does it do that every time you switch scenes?" Da 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 da. I had people DMing me that you know I was close with, and this was towards the very beginning. Sure, but. I was like, man, I really thought that was cool. Like, I really <laughs> liked that. But I'm also, uh, I'm no fool. Mm -hmm. You know, you heed the advice of the people that watch you. Sure. I'm not saying you do everything everybody tells you to do. Right. Because th that's, first of all, unrealistic. And second of all, it is your channel at the end of the day. But if you were, you got to decide what you want to do with streaming. If right. you were the guy that's jumping on here to have a good time and that's it, period, then. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Yeah. But if you're the guy who jumps on here to have a good time, which I do, interact with your community, but you want to grow that community and be able to reach more people, be able to do more bigger charity events, and just everything that comes with growing a community and being able to do more and do more and give back more, then you need to you need to strike a balance between what you want in your brand and what your community wants in your brand. Yeah, that is such a good point. Um, <laughs> probably going to make that the intro to this podcast, to be honest. Uh <laughs> I think that's really cool because you have to, you know, you can't let the viewers run the stream, of course. That's just rule one of streaming. But mm -hmm. I think you made a good point that you're not the one watching the stream, right? So exactly. if you think something's great for your brand, but the stream hates it, then and you, you want to grow, then you probably shouldn't do that. Uh, I've had the same thing happen with Stream Key, actually, in terms of like the phone in Friday stuff. I thought it was really cool to have it like the phone in start with an F and start instead of an uh, P. And mm -hmm. Apparently, people do not like that. I've had a lot there, of people. There was anarchy over yeah. there. I remember. Everyone's <laughs> damning me. Hey, you you misspelled phone. No, I was doing that as the brand, but okay. So I got I've, it. Yeah. I got it but I, I've changed it, though. And not because like I'm letting people run the podcast or whatever, but if people don't like it, then I'm going to sort of adapt it to grow better Absolutely. because that's what matters more to me. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a whole discussion on it. The chat's talking about it now, but. Um, those are good points though. I think you have to make sure that you are humble about it um, and really take advice and feedback from your stream because they're the ones that it's for. So don't get mm -hmm. caught up in your own pride about stuff. I mean, I, I my whole thing is at the end of the day, the community, I don't want to say the community owns the stream. You own the stream, sure. hands down. But your stream isn't anything without the community. Absolutely. It, you, you, what do you, I mean, I remember days of sitting here with my bot and playing video games and talking nonsense into my microphone. Like you'd be committed anywhere else in the world if you were just talking to yourself the way you do <laughs> when you stream when you first start. Right. But I mean, if you want to grow and you want to have these kind of you know communities and stuff like that, you have to be willing to at least take not only constructive criticism but take suggestions. You know, people know what they're talking about. You have to be, I mean, listen, True Gaming is going to be coming out with the coaching program soon. And I really think it's a great opportunity, especially for newer streamers, to learn a lot. But if you're going to do it and you're going to spend the money on it, you have to be willing to take that advice, trust the people that are giving it to you and implementing it. And I'm not saying everything's going to work foolproof. You know, some things may work for people that don't work for others. But take advice that you get from people if you're asking for it at least and run with it mm -hmm. what's the worst the worst that happens is that i try something for two weeks and it fails sure yeah i don't want to you get know what I mean? too far off on that rabbit hole yeah, sorry. Um, yeah but no i definitely agree taking feedback um, and being humble about it as a streamer is really important um, also getting really good feedback is a whole nother beast and like honest feedback from people who aren't just going to sugarcoat it at you mm -hmm. but um, anyway, that was a really good discussion. I want to move back on to branding a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about specifically working with artists. Assuming that most streamers are not artists themselves or you know, even if they consider themselves artists, maybe they're not really up to standards with what like a <laughs> professional would be doing. Uh, have you worked with other artists? I know that you do a lot of your own stuff, but do you work with other graphic yeah. artists for stuff specifically? So I do, I, I can do the simple stuff. That's what I always like to say. So like my panels, there's not a lot that goes into it. kind of just pasting stuff on top of each other and making it look okay. Sure. You know, and my overlay is very simple. So it didn't take a lot to figure that out. But stuff like emotes and now pretty soon it's going to be sub badges for chats. 
um, logos. I can't draw to save my life. I <laughs> barely draw a stick figure to make it work. You know what I mean? And even on, you know, everybody's like, oh, Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop's great. <laughs> you can't draw with Photoshop. It, it's no different than using MS Paint. You're getting a bunch of circles, <laughs> you know, your beat. Um, so commission your stuff. I, I'm a big fan of supporting smaller artists and I don't mind paying the money for something that's going to be a quality item. Mm. So like my emotes, when I very, very first started and I got my emotes, I got my affiliate, I was just joining True. So I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. True. So I went with, I commit, I literally went on Twitter and I typed in emote commission as a hashtag and found all these people come up and I scrolled through till I found a style I liked and an artist I liked and I contacted her and I think it was like $35 for the three emotes, which is a steal once you start <laughs> really getting into commissions, guys. And they really actually came out pretty nice. You know what I mean? They weren't the best thing in the world, but she did a good job. She mm -hmm. streams, I promoted her. I was like, you know what? It's good. Then I was in true for a few months and then I saw the work Dust does. <laughs> and I said, oh, I said, I need to revamp my emotes. So I hit up <laughs> Dusty. Now, while Dusty was a little more expensive, it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer you get what you pay for. Yep. And it, as you can see in the chat, everybody's kind of molded and morphed what we call that emote, but <laughs> we're not going to get into that. <laughs> but, you know, you have to you have to be willing to commission the work that you can't do yourself. You can't be determined to do every single thing or cut cost by, you know, trying not to spend the money on the stuff like right so if you're just starting streaming you just got your affiliate say you're you got two or three subs some people drop some bits here and there keep that money once you hit your threshold take that money and put it directly back into your stream mm. everything i have gotten so far has gone right back into this whether it be audio equipment emotes but specifically to commission with artists because it's expensive it's not cheap yeah. my logo was pretty expensive but i needed to redo my logo because I made my original logo off pictures I got off the internet. And as you grow and you become your own brand, <laughs> now that's where the tricky part is because you can't use other people's shit without their permission. Right. And 90% of the time, the very, when you first start, you grab some cool stuff off the internet, <laughs> you throw it together and you put it on your stream. Yep. And then you realize that, you know, whether it, it, ignorance is never an excuse, but once I had to commission out my stuff and I saw how much artists deal with that, sure. how much people take their stuff off the internet and just use it without their permission and that kind of stuff, you know, it, it really makes you appreciate the fact that a lot of these people are doing this for a living or at least a side living with extra income. Right. And they're working their asses off for, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the time pennies on the dollar for what you're actually getting out of all this and the amount of work that goes into it. Right. You know, so I actually, I have dust now doing my sub badges as mm. we speak, which I cannot wait for, but. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting, coming soon. Commission the stuff you can't do yourself if you can feasibly do it. Yeah, I agree. I think um, a lot of people, including me, when I started, probably wanna do stuff their own, do it themselves, because A, it saves costs, um, and I mean, that's the primary reason, but B, also just because they think they can or um, to get the experience, but a couple of things there. One is that you might actually be it might make more sense for you to actually spend that time streaming rather than learning how to use Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, um, because that's what you're really trying to bank on, not your graphic mm -hmm. ability. Um, and also you can make new connections with artists and people in that space who maybe they wanna watch your stream after all um, and help you you know, be a long time artist, AKA a long time viewer. So there's a lot of reasons why working with an artist makes more sense. Also just the time saver. Like if you make graphics yourself as a starting streamer, uh, if you just can't afford graphics, great. But if you can, I think it makes more sense to go with someone who's better or more professional because that's gonna save you time down the road where if you have like some bad panels or something or some bad work, you don't have to pay again to refresh it very quickly or um, just get like a bad quality product that's gonna tarnish your brand. So yeah. all those reasons are, uh, I think, good reasons to work with artists. Um, Really quickly, where do you find most artists? I know you said you work with smaller ones. Where do you usually try to find those? So now, and again, this I have been looking in True well before I was sponsored because I always I like to throw that disclaimer because I don't want people to think that I'm just pumping True because sure. now I'm you know sponsored. 
I, I really do. True has a great creative section. There's a bunch of awesome people that are graphic designers and artists that will either stream it or don't stream it, but are part of True, and they will put their work in there, and you can DM them, commission them, and such. That's how I did it with Dust. I didn't even realize Dust sponsored, you know, just because he was sponsored. I didn't even realize that he did emotes and all that stuff. I had no idea until one day he posted his work in creative. Mm. And for the artists that are part of True, I love you all. <laughs> Please do not post a commission post every week about how come by my emotes. <laughs> it will turn people off. I promise. I have watched it happen. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. But, but seriously, it, it it's a great avenue to find it. Mm -hmm. There's also a ton of creative discords out there that you can find. Twitter, Twitter and Instagram, if I had to say, are the two. Mm. And you can search hashtags like Twitch emotes or emote commissions or logo commissions. How I find how I found the guy that did my logo, he's actually part of the Set to Destroy stream team. He's mm. a streamer that streams, you know, creative every night. Sure. And he does Twitch emotes and logos and stuff like that. And I mean, he's an incredible artist and he cost a pretty penny for what it is but you know and his t the other thing i will say about commissioning outwork is please be patient you got to realize that especially working with smaller artists this isn't their full-time job for most of them so they're doing this in their spare time things come up life happens i've had to cancel streams because life happens it sucks but it happens right and i realize yes you're paying for a product and a lot of these guys don't get offended. They will make you pay up front. That's because they've been burned so many times. Yeah. Um, Man, if only there were a service be... out there to help artists. <laughs> soon. I know. Coming soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, just be patient with it because good work, A, takes time and B, costs money. Sure. But if you're looking for artists, Instagram and Twitter, search in those hashtags. I've always gotten the best results if you don't find something that fits your style and true. Yeah. Also, one thing I've heard a lot is uh, recommendations just from other streamers. Like if you ha mm -hmm. if you have a friend who got really good stuff or um, you you like a certain streamer who has a great brand, you can always ask them for a recommendation on who they worked with or someone that they know to recommend to you. Absolutely. And smallest artist streamers, I'm not going to lie. It's a great way to get your brand out there is to maybe do one emo for a channel and see how they like it. And again, I realize commission is tough, especially if you're living on commission. Mm -hmm. But it's not a bad idea to hit up a streamer who is either growing or a bigger streamer that you know and that you're in contact with to throw them a piece of art that they can advertise you on stream. Again, yes. it's another branding thing because your art is your brand, in my opinion, when you do that kind of stream. Mm -hmm. And if you can, the more you can get your brand out there and the more people see it, the more networking you do, the more commission you're going to get. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, we've had people on here who say, you know, Woolsey last week said, um, if you're good at something, never do it for free. I agree with that to an extent, but I also think it's a great idea if you are an artist or some other kind of creative person um, offering to make free stuff for people who have influence. Just like, you know, you don't expect anything. Just, hey, you can use this thing. That is a fantastic way to grow your brand and just get more eyes on you. Um, Absolutely. So I, I totally agree with that if you are an artist on that side. Uh, so we're already at 40 minutes. This discussion has been awesome. And we've gotten through like two of my questions. Uh, I do <laughs> quickly before we get into viewer questions, I want to touch on creating a brand for people who feel like maybe they don't have the strongest brand, who don't know where to start with theirs, or maybe just want to improve on what they have. Uh, what kind of general tips do you have for brainstorming or um, improving on your existing brand? Uh, I'm so happy we got to this question because this is one I really wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, my opinion on it, because obviously I can't think for everybody, it's got to be something you're passionate about and you know you're not gonna get sick of. Mm. You have to be able to be able to do this every day and make it long lasting. So if you're, you know, like we go back to the doctor disrespect thing. If you wanna put all that bullshit on every day, like, you know, you're the best thing that's ever been born, then do it. Good for you, man. You can run it through, but I can't. I, I can't <laughs> act like a different person every single time I go out and so, and look to the future. When you're doing your brand, look to the future too. Expect yourself to blow up. Mm. Expect yourself to get huge. Expect yourself to be successful because you want to know that that brand will carry from one viewer to 10,000 viewers. Yep. Because if you look at Josh OG is a good example of this. He used to be weeds. 
And mm. while Josh still promotes, you know, marijuana and all that kind of stuff now, <laughs> it's legal. But when it wasn't, Josh had to rebrand himself. Mm. And Josh was big for rebranding himself. And people got confused. Yeah. You saw it all over Reddit and Twitter and that kind of stuff. When you're that big and you're that popular and you have to fully rebrand your channel out of nowhere because Twitch is talking to you about TOS, mm -hmm. you know, and regardless of how big you are, there is a line that Twitch will not let you cross. I don't care if you got one million viewers. <laughs> you know, you do a certain thing where it violates TOS every single day, eventually they're going to have to step in and be like, yeah, they're not going to ban you right away because, I mean, you're bringing in a ton of money to the site, but they are going to come to you and be like, hey, you got to do something about this here. We're going to have to have another talk where things might not go your way. Right. So you, you want to be able to get a brand that you can, something that you're passionate about or something that inspires you that you know you can run for the rest of the time you plan on streaming. So, and it doesn't have to be, I, I, people would say, I'm not, I don't think I'm over the top, but I'm very, very branded. Sure. Um, where, and people enjoy it. And like I said, I can always scale my stuff back. But it doesn't have to be anything crazy either. You can be, you know, passionate about cupcakes. Uh, just for an example, you can find a way to incorporate cupcakes into your stream. Whether you're making them, eating them, uh, putting them on your screen, finding a way to, you know, throw them against a wall when there's a sub. I mean, just sure. stupid things every once in a while can become pretty funny. <laughs> and <laughs> see, everybody loves cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got to be something you're passionate about because if you're not feeling it, everybody's going to know you're not. You know what I mean? If you don't care about your brand, people are able to tell. Right. And I'm not saying you have to have a brand. I mean, you look at some of the bigger streamers like Green will know, might know this person, Moon Moon Overwatch. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even have an overlay. He literally puts his computer screen on the internet and plays games. Yeah. His personality is his brand. Well, yeah, I mean, he has, again, let's keep it with the brand, with the visual stuff, just because I would well, say that's more identity for him. Yeah. Um, but so he has a very minimal brand. Uh, I think it's still there. It's just not nearly as apparent as something like your brand, which is very yeah. all in your face. He is like just a small moon icon or something. Probably, I haven't mm -hmm. even looked at his panels, probably something like that to tie in with that. Um, but it, it's more so the, uh, what, what I mean in the example I'm making is that your brand doesn't have to be so much in your face right as mine but it also can't be fully non-existent right. where you know you want to stand out mm -hmm. you want to find a way to stand out among other people that are doing the same thing you're doing especially yeah. at whatever level you're at too is you know this is the same thing i mean this can go this topic can go all day off a rail over you know finding what to stream how to use game categories that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. let's say you're in a category of a thousand people and your, you know, your highest view count is 200 on that category and your lowest is five. And then you, let's say you hold an average of 12 viewers. So you're somewhere in the middle of the like, six or seven people streaming that game. If you have a brand that sticks out even in the thumbnail, people are going to click it because mm -hmm. people are going to go to watch that game. They already want to watch. Okay. And that, you already know that you have them by that moment period. Mm. Now, they're going through and they're saying, well, you know, this guy's partnered and he's got 500 views. I don't like to watch partnered streamers because they don't pay attention to the chat. <laughs> so now you're looking somewhere in the middle of the pack because that's what most people do. Most people don't click on the bottom streamer right away. It's not how it works. You, sometimes you're lucky, but if you find <laughs> the analytics, people in the middle are usually what people look for that aren't looking for a huge partner. So now I got four people in the middle and two of these guys are just, you know, a camera thrown on their screen. One guy's got nothing. And then this guy's got, you know, all this crazy shit going on, whether it looks like lights or his overlay is really nice. He's got, you know, this lag or football on the screen, whatever. You're going to click it just to see, you know, it's going to draw the attention in enough where it's not overbearing, but it's going to go, huh, wonder what that deal is. You know, sure. he's got 10 or 12 viewers. I'm going to click on him. And I have had people come in and they literally will say to me, Oh, I saw all this America and I, I just had to click on it. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely see that. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, you know, but it's just, it's something you're passionate about and something you sure. can maintain. Yeah. I think that's important. And also something that you can see yourself doing like years down the road um, and be proud about basically. Um, Cause that's something I've seen people deal with even really big streamers where they'll maybe brand around. Um, I know one guy who branded a lot around like anime stuff and 
weeaboo stuff. And now five years <laughs> later, he's now like late twenties and he's sick of it. But like he can't get away from it because that's what he built his channel on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important to think about that stuff long term too. Even if like in the moment you might love something, like five years from now, are you still gonna love doing that thing and be mm-hmm. proud that it's on your stream? So important to think about too. Uh, cool. It is now 45 minutes. I do want to get into the viewer questions. So if you guys have a question related to this for uh, Snoop Dogg or myself, please let us know. We will grab that. Uh, I'm going to, there we go. Stuff is set up. I, uh, so Driz already has a question ready to go. We'll just grab that. Said, mm-hmm. do you think that being branded USA might drive, drive off someone who doesn't live in the US? Possibly lurkers? I know you said you deemed them honorary Americans. Some people might feel alienated by that though. So I've actually dealt with that, Driz, a few times. Um, do I think it might cost me viewership every once in a while? Yes, especially for the times that I stream because I stream pretty late most of the time, which is perfect EU market. Um, I try to make them feel as comfortable as possible. And I try to make it a point that it's not just that we're that I preach America, and I will say this throughout the stream a few times most of the nights. Um, it's not so much that my stream is just America, it's my stream of pride and comfort. That's, that's how I always explain it to international people that come in, or even international lurkers. Because I've had a few lurkers pop up, and then somebody will join after that's from like Canada and be like, oh, you know, da, da. and I always say Canada is my brother to the north, or you're North <laughs> American, so you're fine. You know, you, you just find a creative way to spin it. and. You try your best. And of course, I think any brand could technically yeah. alienate somebody. You know, like you made the example with the anime stuff. And a lot of people that don't like anime, people might click that channel and never give that guy a chance because he's got some crazy, yep. you know, anime stuff as soon as you come in. And some people might say, eh, not for me. So it's a risk you run with your brand. You're not going right. to please everybody no matter what you do. So you want to try to get your core viewer base. And at least my brand, I can make it so it doesn't alienate people or at least an attempt to do that. I can't help how everybody's going to feel. Right. But I always try to make it that my community, the second you come in there, you're welcomed by me, by my community in the chat. My idea and what I always tell everybody is that this is an open door community and America's a melting pot. You know, yeah. and I always play on that too. America's a melting pot of everybody. Nobody's actually American. Everybody right. has come from somewhere, whether it be descendant or not. Nobody was, with the exception of, you know, Native Americans and a few other people. Nobody was born in America originally through lineage. Right. I would say in general with streaming, basically, I wouldn't be afraid to alienate people, not like be mean to people, but I think it's actually a good thing to narrow in on like a niche. Um, Like, Mm -hmm. you know, with the USA category, maybe you don't appeal to people in China or wherever across the world. Um, But it sometimes can be better for you to really focus in on one core group of people rather than trying to appeal to everybody because by doing that sometimes you appeal to no one so um i'm a big fan of picking something like that and really going after it at the Mm -hmm. expense of losing maybe like the entire pool you get this pool that's actually better for you long term agree uh retro date night i have not played bro i am so sorry (laughs) i feel like i've offended you already and we just met (laughs) (laughs) Uh, by the way your noise gate is a little bit high you can lower it in discord you're getting cut off from occasionally Uh, Oh, um, sorry. In your settings there. Just you know, make sure you get all your words in. <laughs> Is it my input volume? Or- yeah, the the activation threshold. You take that down a little bit to the left. Do you see that? Nope. <laughs> in the uh, oops, voice settings, I'll show you. Uh, it's video and audio, in, right? Input sensitivity. Do you see that? The big yellow green bar? Yeah. Yep. Drag that down to the left. Mine doesn't that. have a mine doesn't have a bar. Oh, it, is, oh, it says automatically detect. Yeah, I'm uncheck kidding. that and drag that down to the left. All right, how about that? Is that better? Yeah, there you go. All right, good, good, good. good. <laughs> all right, just make sure we don't get you cut off too much here. I was um, like, oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, you're all good. So Eshnid said, if you haven't been able to find a certain brand for your channel, is it okay to have your personality be the brand until you find that perfect brand? I mean, so it, it kind of delves into branding and identity mm-hmm. because your personality on stream is your identity. Sure. It's who you are on Twitch. It's how you carry yourself and how people expect you to carry yourself outside of streaming. So if you do go to an event like a TwitchCon or a PAX or an ECGC, something like that, people are gonna expect you to behave at least close to how you are on stream. If you were a completely different person outside of streaming, don't go to cons. 
<laughs> don't go to cons where you might run into people that are viewers and expect something because unless you're willing to put that on at least for the time being it's going to be tough but as for trying to find your perfect brand i mean it's tough because my brand is very it's not uh, what's the word i'm looking for it's not that it's very in your face but it, or very easy to maintain it's just very identifiable mm -hmm. my brand is very easy to look at and know what it is if you're going to brand I, your channel can be your brand if you mm -hmm. find a perfect logo and a color scheme and everything like that that's a brand yeah you know people come in you look at tim the tap man he's got the tiger with the wings you know what i mean it's nothing crazy but it's a brand yeah you know people know that that's tim's stuff you know and it's the same thing with like your channel ash you have the e with the cool um what's the Circle word i'm looking thing. for it looks like computer <laughs> chips kind of and oh yeah pipes I, and all that stuff it looks really cool and it's identifiable i know that that's your logo i know that that's ash coming in you know to discord or so on and so forth i don't even have to see your name especially since it changes 42 times a week um <laughs> So I know it's you just by your logo. So your branding doesn't have to be something as, you know, super in your face as my mm -hmm. American flags and everything like that. It's something as simple as a color scheme, your panels. If you're going to do a brand, make sure it matches. Yes. Like it That's my advice. Exactly. You don't want to look at somebody's stream and like, let's say you got green green panels green and dark blue panels green and dark blue logo now i go down or not panels uh overlays rather now i go down into your panels and it's pink and you know green and red and shit you pulled off the internet and <laughs> you know what i mean it just you want it to all look good in your brand to all be one thing yeah. like green said cohesively together so everybody understands that that is your brand top to bottom yeah you can tell when someone just kind of grabs stuff and tries to put it together and it's something that doesn't blend at all um, two things I'll say on that really quickly is mm -hmm. I wouldn't like wait to stream because you don't have a good brand. I, it's still more important just to stream in general, even if your brand is weak. I mean, at the end of the day, it's more about the stream than your brand anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I don't think there's really any perfect brand. Like, you probably never get it quite right. Um, mm -hmm. I, like Snoop Hogg, his is really in your face, like he said. Uh, I think most brands are not in your face as much. Um, you think of a lot of the big streamers, um, I'd say even like Shroud or Summit or Lyric, like they're very, they're not really their brand as much. Um, some mm -hmm. of them like Lyric maybe a little bit more, but uh, they're more about just the look of it in general. They have like a little logo, some some color schemes and things, but like they're not being that thing on stream as much as like yes. maybe Hog or um, Dr. Disrespect or something. So I wouldn't be obsessed with having like this character brand as much as just mm -hmm. having like a look that's cohesive on your channel. So. Uh, hopefully that helps Eshnid. Make sure I don't miss anything here. So an angry nice. Grinja had one up yep. here. She said, what do graphic designers need to develop your emotes and logos? And also what is considered fair prices? Interesting. Uh, the, the second part of that question is tough. Yeah. Fair prices is, uh, I mean, that can vary from person to person and it can vary from bank account to bank account. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to look at somebody's work this is my advice. If you're looking for emote commissions, most of them need, you know, $400, $500 tablets, which seems absurd, but they connect to the computer and they can draw just like they're drawing on paper and it goes into Photoshop and then they can edit the pieces and so on and so forth. And what I find with it is that the better they are, much like everything else, <laughs> the more money they invest, which the more money they cost. Oh, I'm hitting buttons. Um, so you essentially have to make sure that you're looking around and find people of similar quality and compare their prices. So if you see three people create these kind of emotes, like the chibi faces that look really, really cool and they're $35 a piece, then you find somebody that creates pretty much similar content that's $85 a piece, obviously you know that's overpriced and you don't want to go with it. But if it's somebody's work stands out compared to the ones you're looking at for $35 and they're $80 a piece, then you know that, that that person's worth their money. Because if somebody's publicly has a lot of followers and you can tell they do a lot of commission work and they're publicly asking for that amount of money, it means they're worth it because people are paying them that amount of money. Sure. Yeah. I, I, like you said, I don't think there's any like baseline price that you should really look yeah. to pay. Uh, it varies a lot. And then also first part of that question, just, um, 
what do they need? Uh, really just like ideas. If, if you're not a designer and don't have any existing brand and want to start from scratch, just like ideas of, yeah, what you'd like to see on your channel, um, maybe references for like other channels. Like, I like how this guy does this thing. Maybe something with that combined with this, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So uh, thanks for the question, Angry Grinja. Let's keep moving on here to, I think MPI is next up. Mm-hmm. Looks like he said, I have something I am very passionate about, but I have no idea how to build a branding around it. What should I do to figure that out? Interesting. Uh, I mean, I think I know what you're talking about because I've watched your streams and I think I know what you're talking about the charity and the community wise. It's tough. Yours is tough because if I'm, I'm going to use an example. I don't know if it's exactly what you're talking about, but let's say, you know, I know a lot of people stream for suicide awareness and to support suicide awareness charities and have that community to reach out to and stuff like that. To brand that is tough. You have to, my advice would be to, so they do like a colored wristband and ribbon for everything nowadays. So everything has their own like military and military deployed is yellow you know, the yellow ribbon and that kind of stuff. You could go with something like that, maybe theme color it and brand it that way. But it, it's a tough category to brand because, yeah. you know, you, you obviously don't want to, I, I don't even know how to, I'm trying to think of a way to brand it now off the top of my head. Yeah, that's really, really tough. Um, um, it, it's tough to brand around a cause that, like it's okay to be passionate about a cause or something. Um, I don't think you can really brand yourself around it as much. I think like the branding has to be more about you, if that makes sense. And then you use that branding to help with the cause. I don't think you incorporate the cause into the branding itself. It would be my guess. Um, I don't know of people who have like done that too much. I know like there are a lot of streamers who are very passionate about certain things, right? Like certain streamers will always do charity streams for a certain, you know, St. Jude or something, or are very yeah. vocal about being passionate about something. But it's not really in the brand as much um, in terms of like literally what you see on the screen. Of course, the identity, yes, that's a big part of identity is, you know, I'm always a streamer that's always going to support this cause. Uh, Mm -hmm. In terms of what's actually like being visual on your stream, though, I don't think that's as important would be my thought there. Yeah, uh, and, you know, like I'm just reading a little bit of the follow-up on it and to touch on what Doc said about it, specific cause and branding around it, you're basically tied to that cause for the length of your stream once you get to a certain point. Because once you get to a certain point, like we talked about, it is so hard to rebrand yourself because you lose that. At that point, your brand is tied into your identity, like we said, and now you're literally changing your identity on Twitch and people are gonna wanna know what's going on. People are either gonna be okay with it because they support you as a specific person as the identity and the brand or people are going to lose their minds because they're going to consider you an advocate for the cause and only that cause and mm. now they're going to you run the risk of somebody coming in and saying you don't care about this cause anymore mm. and whether and that's 99 percent of the time probably not going to be the case but it's just tough because unless you unless you're branded and you're working for the company like somebody that like just to use stack up for example if you're the guy that runs stack up or somebody that works at stack up and streams for stack up and brands themselves as stack up that's one thing but yeah. that's few and far between so you just got to be careful at i'm not saying you can't brand yourself technically partially around it with some colors and stuff but personally i think your brand has to be representative of you mm-hmm. and the stuff you do yeah, I will say that's a good example actually is I have seen a few streamers who try to build brands around stack up or operation supply drop, but be careful about that because it gets very messy, um, especially if you try to have like your own stream outside of charity streaming, because I've known some streamers who do that and people just kind of always think they're charity streaming, right? Because like, well, I'm, you know, on the team of operation supply drop or I'm the local stack up leader or something. So here's my stream. Well, is your stream just your own channel or are you actually always just streaming for stack up? So I think that gets messy. I think it's much uh, just clearer for viewers and easier in general, less messy to brand yourself and then say, hey, I like to stream for this cause a lot. I am not mm-hmm. I am not that cause. Like that's not who I am, but it's a big part of what I believe in. So yeah. that makes more sense to me. Um, Driz really quickly had a question. At what point does a brand or identity become a gimmick? I don't know that I could see myself pushing or forcing something all the time. 
Um, so Dr. Disrespect is a gimmick. Yeah. That's a great example of a gimmick that has to push something all the time. And while I'm not saying or dissing Doc Disrespect, because I, I think it's incredible what he does, the amount of production he puts into it, regardless of how you feel about him as a streamer, you have to take a step back and respect how much this guy has to put in every time he hits go live and how he specifically has to be able to keep that fresh. Because once you get into that kind of gimmick, yeah. now you got to think of ways to stay within your brand and gimmick but still keep it fresh for 30 plus thousand people. Yeah, for years. Which I couldn't, yeah, for years. I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, you have to have cheating scandals on Twitch apparently, but <laughs> oh anyway. <my> gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw a little shade out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, So mine, so people will, people have a half and half opinion on my channel when it comes to that kind of question. People will say mine is very gimmicky or mine is very, uh, you know, it, it, it's played up and it's just props for everything. And, and I can tell you that, I, not that I prove it by any means, but if you look at the amount of stuff I do for our military when it comes to charity and that kind of stuff, I, I think that just, that's why I don't ever have to justify myself. I, I never find myself, like if somebody calls me out and they're like, well, you're only using the America thing to get viewers. Or you're only pushing the military support to get viewers and that's messed up. I, you know what? You're, you have the right to your opinion. At the end of the day, I'm not concerned with it because I know what I put in for it. I know what my family does. I know what I go and do for work every day. You know what I mean? So I, I don't concern myself around that. You're going to get it no matter what. But the line between gimmick and brand, it's kind of based individually. If you feel like it's a gimmick and you're forcing yourself to do it, then you know, you're know you kind of you're, you're in a gimmick. I don't force I don't have to force myself to put all this stuff on and really support the America stuff because I'm passionate about it. I truly I love it and I love being able to come on here every day and reach new people and you know push that kind of stuff out to people. I love being able to do something that our vets can sit back and you know relax and enjoy. I like being able to know that I can reach out to certain charities and have a little more of a not a pull but a little more of a backing when I go into mm. it, being able to go to like, I can reach it. Like when I reached out to stack up, when lit and myself did that month long charity stream for stack up, my branding sold me so much more, even not knowing who I was, because it, when you click on my stream and you see all the stuff, you have an idea that obviously I support it. And I, I really want to push that cause. And I got a lot of support from stack up just mm. out of that. And then when the people come in, they realize, you know, wow, this guy really isn't just some gimmick looking to pull views. You right. know what I mean? He, he's really doing a lot, giving out a lot, pushing back a lot to be able to, you know, get the biggest spread of word on this charity. Right. Yeah. I think actually that's a good follow up to MPI's question on a good way mm -hmm. to use a brand. You know, you are not stack up, but in the case of you built this brand for yourself, it actually worked in your favor with stack up where it complemented that charity. Uh, so I think that's really cool. I think, like you said, you are not a gimmicky streamer in the sense that you don't get the sense that you're a character or something. Like you are still very mm -hmm. much yourself. Um, you use the USA and America branding to kind of just build up the flavor, but you're not like be t pretending to be some crazy America patriot when you're not really or something or yeah. taking it to an extreme or something. Um, mm -hmm. So to wrap that all back around nicely, I would say, Driz, I don't think branding should ever really be gimmicky for, for like, except for maybe 5% of people that, cause that's just the image. And I think like it shouldn't really be taxing on you to just have a brand that you like and put on your channel. Identity definitely can be if you're in a character and or maybe just a version of yourself that is really tough to keep up with like lots of energy. If you're a low energy person or whatever. Um, so hopefully that helps you think through that a little bit there. Uh, I, a few other questions I'm seeing through here. Uh, angry again, just tagged me in something, but I don't Wh know what she was she saying. One? She, uh, uh, which she, which she had asked. Oh yes. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what about really chill streamers like me? I like to be laid back during my stream cause I relax when I'm doing things I stream. So I personally think that that falls into identity more than branding, Absolutely. you know, and you even said right after that, I'm still kind of red and black and skulls though. That's your brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your identity, like how I am on stream is my identity. All the stuff I wear is my brand. And you can 
you can clearly, and it's not so clear in some streams, but you can clearly separate my identity from my brand. Because if you ran into me on the street, you're going to get the same person. My identity is the same, but I'm not going to be wearing American flag suspenders and sunglasses out at the 7-Eleven down the road because people are going to call the police. <laughs> but my point is, is that your, your brand and your identity, they're very f- with, you know, I hate to keep going back to him, but Dr. Disrespect's brand is his identity and his identity yeah. is his brand. But that's very rare. Yeah. Very rare. You don't see that very often because it's very hard to do that. It takes a very high level of commitment mm-hmm. to be able to be your brand every time you have to do something related to your stream, whether it be go live for eight hours or go to a con or you know whatever it is. Because when Guy Beam runs into people on the street, it nine times out of 10, people probably don't even recognize him because he doesn't have the glasses, the wig, all this stuff on. He doesn't mm-hmm. have the mustache. I mean, I could take my glasses off and my hat off. You can tell who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't change me that much. Yes, surprise view for everybody here. Yeah. Look, look what you get on the podcast. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's not the hugest distinction of my identity. It also limits me playing dark games. It's very hard, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, to go to answer your question, your brand is your red and black and your skulls, Yeah, in my opinion. I, I would agree with that. Um, and you can probably make it fit in if you really want to like push the chill environment on the stream maybe you tone back the skull and crossbones I don't know just again brand should complement your identity but it, yeah. it is not it it's not your identity itself um, so figuring out a way to put those together would probably be helpful um, if you don't want to like have the very edgy identity to yourself um, again guys we have a lot of questions coming in here we already are over an hour but Snoop told me he has a lot of time today so we're going to try and get through free. a lot of these questions since it is a very great episode to talk about stuff uh, I saw him from Beardy somewhere back yeah, here but he didn't tag pretty, me So I got it I'm a pretty generic brand Beardy and glasses I mean who does that <laughs> I'm pretty set on full yellow coloring etc I'm wondering if I might be too generic or if I should top beard spot so I can give you a lot of references for beards because I played off that pretty well, <laughs> even with my brand. Because I, the other thing, it, it's a joke, but I couldn't shave my face because hmm. people people will comment on my beard on a regular basis too. If I was to shave my face, people would be culture shocked. <laughs> and I, first of all, I don't want to shave my face. But right. That's beyond the point. Um, and I think my wife would divorce me. But <laughs> but <laughs> so there's a lot of resources out there for your brand and that's the other thing so if you think your brand is generic don't look at it as generic look at it as an opportunity to network with other people that have the same brand so there's two guys on twitch that are partnered they're called uh oh my god it's beard something beard bros or something like that but they run the beard brigade stream team (laughs) or bearded guys gaming is what it's called i know a lot of bearded streamers out there that play off the beard in their brand So these two guys are, I don't know if they're friends or brothers or what, but they co-stream next to each other on green screens on the screen. And they play like Sea of Thieves and Seven Days to Die, but they got partnered out of all this. Mm. And they're very entertaining. And they're down south, homely guys, with big beards, and Mm. they're huge, you know, and they're hysterical. And they put like dyes in their beard and stuff (laughs) like that. But the point is, is that they run an entire stream team called the Beard Brigade. And it's all bearded streamers. Mm-hmm. that they have on the team and there's a twitch um community called bearded gaming or something like that the point is, is if you have what you feel is a generic brand don't look at it as generic look at it as an opportunity to network beards are established as ridiculous as that's going to sound on twitch yeah they have their own full bore community if you look at the bearded gaming community i think it's got like 1500 viewers at minimum most of the time it's pretty crazy to see like I get a lot of hosts out of beard brigade guys because I have a beard and I push America so it kind of <laughs> complements it hand in hand but never consider it generic you obviously want to stick out in your own way but a lot of that can be identity too you can shine through your identity and your brand can still be you know very specific to a certain thing or very community oriented where you can find a lot of common people to network with sure (laughs) excuse me yeah hopefully that helps again i've seen a lot of beard streamers on twitch uh i think if you're gonna push that really gotta really push it well 
because uh, there's a lot of competition for people who kind of see beards as like an easy well i'm the beard guy well there's a lot of beard guys on twitch so mm-hmm. um if you're gonna do that go after it hard is what i'd say and the glasses cool. is a cool touch you can twist on that too <laughs> uh mpi said just as a follow-up so would it be better to just stick with my colored branding as it is now red and white than just make that very apparent and upfront in my channel I would say yes. I, I think the best thing you can do with branding is to make it eye-catching. And that doesn't mean it has to be like over the top, um, but the whole purpose of your brand in my eyes is to just like catch someone's attention. It could be something very minimalistic, very simple, or something very flashy, but you wanna get people to kind of take a second look at you and they say like, oh, this is kind of cool. I, I like the look of this. Cause that's like really what you want your brand to do. Um, do you have thoughts on that, man? Yeah, I mean, it- it's kind of you know what we touched on already it's you want your brand to represent you and you represent that cause so you want to find a way to kind of tie it in but you don't want it to lock you into being the guy that only streams for hope for the day you know what i mean because you're not always going to be streaming for that charity and if you are i mean if that's what you want to do then go for it but be a hundred percent sure that's what you want for as long as you're going to be on twitch Mm -hmm. because if you do that and you stream hope for the day, I'm hope for the day, this is what I do, period. I stream for this charity, I stream for this charity every day. Sure. Then you need to stream for that charity every day for the next two to three years and know that that's what you're gonna wanna do. And if you blow up in that two to three years, you're streaming until you're done on Twitch. (laughs) Because the second you have 5,000, 10,000 viewers, knowing that you stream for a charity specific and you get a lot of viewers from that specific cause and then you stop, decide one day I'm not doing it anymore, you are going to catch a ton of backlash because whether it be justified or not, you should have the right to do what you want with your channel. But if you are going to do it long term and you want to stick with it, it comes with a responsibility. Mm. Whether that responsibility be to yourself or your community, that you have a responsibility to make sure that you continuously put out that kind of product. You know, it's like a company like True Gaming. If a company like True Gaming decided two years down the road they're shutting everything down and they're going to sell cheese, Could people happen. are going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you might open a cheese division, but you can't open just cheese. You can't just be True Cheese True now. Cheese coming uh, <laughs> August 2018, guys. Stand by. Yeah. Our, our next greatest venture. <laughs> you know, it's stuff like that. you got to be careful with. Yep. I agree. You know, your, um, your brand. Hopefully that helps the MPI. I think it's a good brand. Uh, just think of ways that you can help make it kind of pop a little bit and catch people's attention. That's the biggest thing. Uh, after going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of channels, having a strong brand is everything. Because imagine like the viewer has been on Twitch for years and just they come to this channel one day and suddenly like, oh, I've never seen this before. Or, oh, this kind of seems cool. That's what you need. I think that's all that branding really is doing at the end of the day. It's just trying to make that quick connection and then also something that people can identify with over time as liking or strong logo or something. Um, I, 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 this is a stupid analogy, but I, I've used this before. Your brand opens the door for people to come in and the streamer is the one that keeps them in the house and invites them to come back. It, your identity is what keeps people coming back, but your brand is what gets them in the door. Sure. And like everybody says, you have that first 10 to 15 seconds to make an impression on somebody that comes into your channel. And I can tell you guys that watch your, this is a little off topic, but guys that watch your the list of people or you watch your view count by the time you see that number go up and know somebody new is in there they're gone just remember that 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 number doesn't update fast enough for you to keep up so yeah. it goes back to the always talking and the identity part of it you you don't want the dead silent stream because you will lose people that you didn't know were there and then it's already too late sure uh, all right, let's quickly try to move through yeah. some here so angry grinja mm-hmm. asked a question about TOS in terms of nonprofits. I think MPI answered that yeah, and I, I don't I don't know any TOS rules when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a very a pretty specific question. I think MPI helped you out with that one, so that should be good. Um, quick moving down here, make sure you didn't miss anything. Uh, Ponders, I thought I saw Drizzt something. Just was just thanking you, I think, for answering his question. Um, he said it's good to support the country even if you don't necessarily agree with some things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes, I, I agree with that. That's a good point. Uh, make sure I don't forget anything here. That might actually be all the questions. Cool. TK, by the way, thank you for loving the podcast, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Vegas just popped in here to ask one. He said, what is your opinion on face rig? Instead of streaming your real face, but that might fall into representing your true personality. So 
There is a guy that I've become close with on Twitch recently who actually just got partnered, and he is incredible. I mean, the guy... I'm a huge fan of production value in people that put an amazing amount of time into their stream to make sure their stream comes off as awesome. So what I mean by that is something like, if you look at the overlays around myself and Green right now, it's something simple like that takes time, and it takes time off stream to do. You know, while you might be able to, if you're one of the streamers, and I've seen Green do it every once in a while, he'll stream After Effects when he's creating something, but... 90% of people don't stream into creative for that. So that's your time off stream that you could be doing something else other than streaming that you're dumping into it. And I'm a big fan of that. So to go back to your face rig question, this guy uses a face rig as his main thing. That's what he does. He is a skull and it's got crossbones underneath it, but it's a face rig <laughs> and it's got a headset on it and it's hysterical, huh. but he adds a lot of different effects to pull you in and that kind of stuff. But he mainly streams up until maybe two months ago, he wasn't ever on a face cam. Now he interchanges it every once in a while, that kind of stuff. But this guy got partnered using face rig. Face rig can brand you. There's a few people I know that use face rig now that are blowing up. And it, it seems so ridiculous. And in a way I'm so jealous because <laughs> you could literally stream in your boxers and you'd be golden. Yeah. I mean, literally every day. But I like being able to have my stuff like that. You can also though, like him, he slowly implemented a camera or he does where he, you have to use it to play to your advantage. So he uses it as a way to gain revenue and support for the channel is he will 500 bits as a quick face reveal. Hmm. So what he'll do is he'll donate 500 bits and it activates a gif of him doing some dumb face or something in front <laughs> of his green screen. Um, you know, stuff like that. So you got to find ways to use it to your advantage and you got to make sure it fits your brand. Mm -hmm. So let's say your brand is Foxes, just for example, because that's the first face rig that pops into my head. Then you're golden. But if your whole brand is pigs, let's say, and then you use the <laughs> fox face rig, people are going to have no idea what's going on and it's going to make zero sense. <laughs> Unless you're promoting like a farm animal stream, nothing makes sense there. So you got to be careful in my opinion. You can use it, and I've seen it blowing up more and more, and I believe you can customize face rig now oh, with gosh. custom done I'm face sure. rigs because I've seen some pretty cool ones, and I don't remember seeing them when face rig started. So either people are adding them or you can customize your own. But the long and short of it is I think you can use it. I've watched – I literally just watched somebody get partnered this last month mm. using it. Yeah, It's just it has to fit your brand, and you have to make up – for some shortcomings you get by not being able to be visualized. Yeah. Um, objectively, yes, you can use face rig to like, just like Snoop was saying, I think it's, uh, objectively it's great. Um, it can work really well. I think you can still do it and have your personality on there in the examples that Snoop said, or you could do like a, like a Wizard of Oz type thing where someone's behind the screen, like running it and there's like production failures or something. Um, subjectively, my opinion, I can't stand face rig. It just, I don't know why it just like freaks me out and I can't watch it. Um, <laughs> but again, don't be afraid to isolate people. If you know, maybe my stream or your stream is not for me, maybe it's for other people. So whatever you want to do, but you said opinion. You're, so I thought I'd definitely, add definitely that. not going to make everybody happy. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, somebody reposted a question. Oh, really? I see one from yeah. a, a Kamakuma. Have yeah, I he was reposting right. somebody else's Motfolios. Oh, Motfolios, yeah. He said, I, I know gaming is the main content on Twitch, but I've seen a lot of creatives have a good luck streaming on Twitch too. Do you see the creative subject growing, staying pretty level? Do you think it has more potential? Uh, I mean, I absolutely think it does. And the reason I say that is that this is the YouTube generation. And let me explain why I'm saying that. I go on YouTube every time I want to learn how to do something. I It doesn't matter. It could be something as simple as cooking eggs. There is a YouTube video. It's So let me not call it the YouTube generation. It's the tutorial generation. <laughs> so if you're streaming creative and you're making art or like Gamer Dad does, Gamer Dad does all those figures. It does the painting and stuff like that. And I'm useless. I, I can't, I can't literally, I was saying before, I can't draw a stick figure. But watching him do it, there's something about it, at least for me, that is awesome. But what really draws you in, in my opinion, is the fact that he explains what he's doing the whole time. He tells you what he's using, how he's doing it, and why he's doing it. Mm. 
and it's cool to watch live because you can ask him a question if so if it's something if you're interested in painting minis you can ask him why do you specifically use this airbrush or why do you specifically use this tone of paint why does the white paint go on last you know it just Little things like that make a creative stream awesome, and there's a huge overwhelming way to be interactive with Twitch if you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you can find the way to be able to be creative and not be silent, you have a golden opportunity to blow up in the creative scene, especially because all it's doing right now is growing, and there are not a lot of people in it. Yeah. And I I wish I was creative (laughs) because... Yeah, I think it overlaps with um, IRL a little bit. Just in terms mm. of it, Twitch is kind of experimenting with letting people stream who are not gaming um, yeah. more and more. In terms of like whether I see it blowing up, though, I don't know. Uh, I think it's really cool. I don't think it's going anywhere on Twitch. Uh, I would kind of say I don't think it's actually going to blow up. Reason uh, is because the platform mm-hmm. is tailored to gamers and not to creative people. Now, maybe if they add things like specifically for creative streamers, um, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but... You know, adding more tools so that people who stream creatively can really kind of push that um, because currently everything on Twitch is really geared at gaming streamers and people kind of make do in IRL or um, creative or music or whatever. But I don't think it's really designed for them to grow as much as a gaming stream. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, so so like you said, the website is not catered. This is where the YouTube quote unquote generation, I think you'd have more success on YouTube mm. doing creative stuff because you can reach more of an audience in the aspect of if you're interactive in your YouTube comments, I guess yeah, it could work to your advantage. I just don't really, like I see Doc and Drew is talking about creative streamers that have seen a decline in their viewership mm. recently and a lot of people jumping over to IRL. I yeah. see, I think my opinion's mildly biased only because Gamer Dad has introduced me to a ton of creative stuff. So maybe that's why I'm just thinking that it's more than it is. I I don't I can tell you this. I don't browse the creative category. You will never catch me browsing creative streams other than people that gamer dad tells me are awesome. I don't watch creative all that often, but I'm it's not something I do, so it's kind of tough. Like it's really cool to watch gamer dad do that stuff. Yeah. But it's not my niche. It's not something I like to do personally, so it makes it tough for me to watch. And, I mean, Gamer Dad makes it entertaining, and it's fun to hang out with Gamer Dad. But that's because I'm hanging out with Gamer Dad. I'm not. I'm not really. And now it's cool to watch him do that stuff. But I'm. I'm personally not learning anything because I'm not looking to learn anything. I'm not saying that he's not educational and he doesn't explain what he's doing in a right. very well and done way. It's just it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where you run into it. Is it's depending on what you're trying to stream. It's very niche. Yeah. Um, I will say, you know, uh, Witchy's talking to people who do Photoshop streams and don't talk at all. Um, I, I think I see a lot of creative streamers who do it as like a backup to gaming or maybe, you know, maybe they are primarily creative streamers, but they're also very involved in gaming. Um, either they watch other people's streams or they play games themselves and they also just kind of fear they go on Twitch too. But the problem with that is that it's a secondary thing, right? The primary is gaming. Um, mm-hmm. Twitch, you know, yes, they allow people to do creative streaming, but again, it's built for game streaming, not for creative streamers. Now, I don't think that it means that you can't grow as a creative streamer. I mean, there's plenty of people out there who have hundreds of hundreds of viewers in creative, in IRL, whatever you want to do, music. Um, So you can definitely grow in those areas, but the question of whether it's going to blow up, I don't really see it doing that without some sort of big change in the future. I mean, yeah, and I, I think if I was a creative streamer, it depends on if you like gaming. I would try to find a way to incorporate the two. Mm. So like like what Gamer Dad does is he does a lot of those, uh, the Warhammer figure from the game Warhammer, the tabletop. Mm-hmm. Now, Gamer Dad has established himself as a creative streamer and he's phenomenal and he is growing and you know he's doing everything right in the creative space. But Gamer Dad is an exception to the rule in, in most cases. So what my opinion is, is that if I was in that situation, I would try to almost play Warhammer in a side-by-side, almost like an old-school two-player, and that's how I would set up my brand as I sit here and Mm. think about it. But I would do like an old-school split-screen two-player thing, but on one side or on the top, I'm doing Warhammer, and on the bottom, I'm doing my creative stuff. 
and then you can stream to the Warhammer category. You are playing games and now you're also creative. So in the midst of like down to, again, I've never played Warhammer, so I could be completely off and you're not able to do this at all because it takes too much attention. But <laughs> if it's something slower where you can stop and do things is you can play to a certain point and like specifically paint the character for that point. I think that would be a really cool way to stand out as a creative streamer on the gaming platform. Yeah, I think um, you have to incorporate gaming somehow for sure. Um, I think you could still stream creative the whole time. You know, like Gamer Dad says, he, or like Gamer Dad does, he does a lot of creative streams almost entirely. Um, but all the things he does on stream are game figures or, you know, tie mm. into gaming somehow. I don't think, I don't know of anyone at all that would stream on Twitch and not somehow tie into gaming um, yeah. just because that's the platform. So um, I think if you want to grow in the creative space, I mean, that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, we had a podcast with Chaos yeah. on that and Gamer added some insights on that as well on a past podcast. You can check that out. Um, it's its own beast for sure. And it's kind of even more of a wild west than the rest of Twitch because it's so new and it changes so much throughout like months and seasons and things. Mm -hmm. um, you could maybe do it by splitting gaming creative Akamuka. Akamuka? Akamakuma? <laughs> trying to say that right Akamakuma. Akamakuma. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah I, I would guess that it's probably more bit excuse me <laughs> i'm getting a little sick here uh it's probably yeah, better to pick one doctor. thing and go for it rather than trying to split your time uh just because that's the rule for twitch as a whole if you just want to grow then the best thing to do is to stick to one thing and do it forever now whether you can do that or not mentally is another question but if you just want to grow that's usually the best way to do it so yeah I agree with that. And and when I said my, I wouldn't, like even Doc said, you see a lot of guys that have started creative that have tried to incorporate gaming and their numbers plummet. Yeah. Because that's not what your community is interested in. If you built a community around creative, it is very, very, very hard to get them to turn around and come in for gaming streams because that's mm -hmm. not why they're there. They're there to, uh, this falls into your brand and your identity, to yeah. be completely honest. You have branded yourself as a creative streamer and that's what you stream every night five nights a week you are doing figurines or you're doing photoshop or whatever mm -hmm. your community expects that and this goes into changing your brand you know yeah. once you're established the problem is it's hard because now you change your brand you decide to game one day a week so now i'm going to play Fortnite one day a week now <laughs> i had an average of 50 viewers now i'm in an average of 10. yep you and know that what i mean it, it hurts your channel growth wise sure and that is not exclusive to creative either i mean that happens with Absolutely. any other gaming platform i think just more pronounced with the creative stuff because it's yeah. so different um but if you know same guy i was talking about earlier was a league of legends streamer for years with the anime stuff switched to fortnite to try and get on the hype train and his viewers just went in the toilet and they came right back to league because that wasn't working so um, yeah, I mean, Driz, Driz just said the same thing he's like you know you see a 50 year yep. viewership normal if you if you're but again that's that's almost branding if you brand mm -hmm. yourself as an overwatch streamer you damn sure better log on every night and play overwatch because the second i mean look at even the bigger streamers like you know grant you there's a few exceptions to the rule, like tim the tap man and everything else but even tim yeah up until tim recently too. when tim dropped overwatch because he was just sick of playing it and originally switched to fortnite he dropped his views. viewership dropped mm -hmm. two three thousand views which is mind blowing to somebody like me because I'm like, oh my God, how do you give up 3,000 views? Like, it hurts my heart. <laughs> but even for a guy like him, you know, if you're averaging 13,000 viewers, you know, in X amount of subs and stuff, and then you stop playing Overwatch, and now you're down to 10 or 9,000 average, yep. that's a big hit in numbers. Yep. And but he had a plan for it, right? Like, it's one thing to know exactly. that sticking to one thing all the time is technically the best way to grow and you will grow the fastest or whatever and this is the best for your channel but if mentally you want to die doing that then it's not gonna work out so well for you so yeah. um even for Timmy the biggest streamers clips. what's up timmy what's up tim um Glad you're catching one live yeah I th we are kind of wrapping it up here unless we have any more questions from people if people just a uh, couple minutes here should i wait a bit before asking questions no dn go ahead and ask them now open right now because because I think we're gonna have to send Green an ambulance if that happens again. So I don't know if he's gonna be able to be on stream. He's over there choking. I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, yeah, tag me if you have a question, guys, just so I see it. I see one from DNL asking right now. He says, "What would you advise to variety streamers who've established their brand around themselves and their community in terms of the games they stream? Because I've seen a lot of variety streamers, including myself, that really tend to." to switch quite largely in terms of the games they play. So basically, how do you brand as a variety streamer switches a lot? 
I mean, I'm branded as a variety streamer. Yeah. It's what I do. Uh, I variety stream. I play. I mean, I'm playing Heavy Rain right now, <laughs> and it's it's popular again for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but it's been a more popular game in the Twitch category for some reason. I don't. A lot of people are playing it right now, mm-hmm. but variety streaming and branding. I mean. It's tough. Your brand is, you know, all this stuff. It's what people like to see, what people expect to see, what catches people's eyes. While your personality is, I think your variety stream kind of falls into your identity on Twitch more than a branding thing. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I say that is because, you know, people know what to expect. They come into my stream. They expect me to be, you know, I'm welcoming. I'm chipper. I have a good time. I like to joke. I crack up at the dumbest stuff in the world. But they also know that I'm going to play some kind of story game 90 percent of the time and sure it's going to be single player and sometimes i will like especially for you know choices matter stuff if it's not a time choice sometimes i will turn to my chat and i'll be like hey you know what do you think we should do here should we pick this guy this guy or this guy you know whatever the case is but the variety end of it i mean first of all variety streaming is tough mm-hmm. it's tough it's hard it's hard to build a base because now you're the selling point you can't fall back on the game. You know, Overwatch streamers can fall back on the game. You'll get 600 people lurking your channel just to watch you play Overwatch if you're decent at it. But the second you turn around and you play, well, you you know what I mean. I saw that. <laughs> I mean, that's not a guarantee. Let's not just not assume that but, anyone streaming Overwatch gets 600 lurkers. But you know <laughs> what I mean. Like you can you can fall back on the fact that people want to watch this game. You know, so if you have established a community of Overwatch people then you're going to play Overwatch. And if you swap, you're going to lose viewers. But you have that to fall back on. You know if you stream Overwatch, you have 10 people that are going to come watch you every single night just because they want to see you play Overwatch. You know, it's... Variety's tough. Mm-hmm. Variety, you don't have that. The Your fallback is your identity as a person. Your fallback, they come to watch you. They come to see you. My community comes to hang out with me and expects me to fail miserably at QTEs and just Mm -hmm. do something ridiculous to make myself look bad that ends up on a clip and someday will go viral and I'll regret every minute of it. (laughs) But (laughs) the point is, is that when you variety stream, you have to have a big personality, in my opinion, to be able to variety stream. Yeah. Because if you don't, you don't have the gameplay category to fall back on. Sure. Um, So, Deanne, I know you just kind of joined in here, I I assume, quickly. Uh, I want to quickly just reintroduce branding versus identity. For, for this podcast, we've been talking about branding as the things on your stream or like the colors, the look, the image of your stream. Um, you know, this right now, all the purple and yellow, um, everything that I built the podcast around with the purple and yellow and the look of it all, that's the brand, right? And then the identity for your channel is more like your personality, what games you play, um, what people know you as. So in terms of branding, I think you can incorporate branding with games. You know, you see a lot of people who only play one game Maybe they play a ton of Fortnite, so all the branding is like Fortnite logo style text or something, um, or Fortnite like pictures and things. But I think regardless of whether you're variety or single streamer, it's usually better to build your own brand instead of jumping off of a game. I mean, you look mm-hmm. at Ninja, who has been the Fortnite guy for God knows how long. Um, none of his branding is related to Fortnite. I That's completely that. his own thing, and he's refined it over time. Um, So that shows you, even if you really brand yourself as like, whatever, you you play this game all the time, it's still important to have a brand that's your own and not tied to the game. Even though like you might think it makes more sense to tie into that game um, and maybe you grow faster or something in the beginning, in the long term, that's gonna bite you because if you ever wanna switch, even from like a a little thing in that game, like in League of Legends, let's say you play one character all the time and you wanna switch to a different character. Now you have to get all this rebranding done to fit that character or something. basically just having a very general brand is really good or a very unique Mm -hmm. brand i guess is a better way to put it so yeah and i saw one from timmy two clips Mm -hmm. uh i don't know if it's been asked which it hasn't do you consider variety streaming or not when you consistently play a couple games for example i play overwatch fortnite at little rum rail uh i mean i would consider you more of a a br shooter streamer than a variety streamer because your games still all fit a category they all still kind of have that element of shooting guns and competitive behind it, or maybe even competitive streamer. That'd be the way to put Mm. it. Yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to read that question again. So basically, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think if you play more than one game consistently, Most. you're variety. Um, if you have like an equal balance of everything, you're still variety. If you play one game most of the time and then sometimes you play this other game maybe that's more single game but i really think it's pretty clear cut most of the time like either you're single or your variety so mm-hmm. that's my thoughts on that one um any other questions we missed here I'm trying to read um, through here gringo was being nice and awesome and she's right you can only watch so much PUBG and fortnite <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh, i do want to branch to single player found a title yeah i mean Timmy, I would ask your community. The only other part to that to that little follow up where you said that you know you want to branch to single player, but you haven't found anything you want to stream. Mm. Think of a few games that really, really catch your eye that are single player. If you want to try to dabble in it at least, and then ask your community what they'd want to watch if they'd be willing to watch anything like that. Sure. And then you have to weigh whether or not you're willing to expect to have a lower number. That's the best way to put it. Every time I change a game, I expect my number to go down. Because there's always a few people in there that are just there specifically to watch, you know, Beyond Two Souls or whatever it is. So every time I swap categories, I expect my number to go down. Mm. You know, I never expect my number to maintain or go up right away if I switch from one game to another, especially midstream. The other advice I've heard everybody tell variety streamers, and it's kind of tough if you're somebody like me who only does three or four hours during the week, is you do three hours on your base game if you want to start dipping your toe into it. You do three hours on your base game and then you move on to you know whatever you want to play so this way you've built the base you have your numbers you know who's there and this will show you how many people are there for you in my opinion and how many people are there for the game so if you're a fortnite streamer you get 15 viewers average on fortnite you play fortnite for three hours and then you swap over to persona 5 which is a huge drastic one. And that's the only reason I say that. Now you keep 10, you know, 10 people are there watching you for you and not you for the game. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, it, good. No, I was just going to say, it's a, it's a good way to, to meter whether or not you're willing to take those hits and see how your stream will do if you play, you know, if you completely swap from your strictly playing FPS to something completely out of the yeah. blue like persona. Um, I will say we also did an episode on this with Supervid for variety streaming. Yes. If you want to check that out, that's our most popular episode. So it oh, is. one of them. That's, yeah. So I love that episode. Um, Supervid has very, very, very good points on variety streaming too. Yep. I'll link that at the end check of that one out. this episode if you want to check it out. Um, so TK by the Bay, I think Talk by the Bay. I don't know exactly. TK by the Way. He says, as a fresh streamer, should I work on having some sort of brand right away? Or just stream first, worry about a brand later. That one, uh, in my opinion. Okay. Um, sure basically, I, I talked about this earlier, but don't use the lack of brand as an excuse to not start streaming. Now, yes. on some level, like yes, it's good to plan out your brand and make your stream work with that ahead of time. But the way I look at that is, it's better to have some viewers than no viewers. Like yes, you could wait to perfect your brand and then start streaming, and like that's when I'll get all the viewers. But in that meantime, you're not streaming and you're not getting viewers. So I would work on that along the way and just start streaming because that's the most important thing yeah. at the end of the day is to just hit the start streaming button and keep doing that. So I, like mine, I'm a great example of this because if you go back to my streams, even three months ago, I didn't have a quarter of the stuff that I have now for my brand. Push content. I, I'm here to talk about branding because branding is the topic and branding is what you know i've branded myself a specific way and i i think i've done a decent job at it but there are people that have branded much better than me and i am always willing to take advice but as a new streamer content 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 push content Mm -hmm. i don't care if you stream for an hour and you're streaming something people have never even heard of push content because when people start to find you, people are going to look. Make sure you're saving your VODs, too. I can't stress this enough, and I don't know why people don't do it. Make sure your VODs are on. Because if I come to your channel and you're a new streamer, let's say you haven't branded at all. You haven't even set up in a you know a section underneath your thing. Everything There's nothing here, and it's the little guy. You know, At least I can click on your videos and see that you've done stuff. I can, I can at least get an idea, even if I watch a snippet for 10 seconds, that, you know... Oh, this guy plays this game. Oh, you know, he's got a webcam. He's got this. He's got that. He's talking to his community. He's interactive. 
if you don't have a VOD up, you're so, you're missing out on such an opportunity and it's content. <laughs> you're pushing content, but you also need to have content to go back to. Mm. And it's also, I, I still watch my VODs once a week. Yeah. I will watch one or two of my VODs and I don't sit through the whole thing, but I will look at specific parts or like the best tool I can say that I've been using is the, um, is the stream summary because mm. you can see where your dips in viewership are. And what I will do is if I get a huge dip in viewership, I'll click on that specific part in the bar graph and it will drop you right into your VOD huh. at that exact time. And it's great to be able to see. So then you back it up a little bit or like right before the drop. And it's good to be able to look at it and say, what did I do here that I lost 15 viewers? You know what I mean? So I can look at it and go, oh, I swapped games or mm. I had a lull in the stream where there was a lot of story and I wasn't really saying anything. And then I can take myself back and go, you know what? That's a time where I should have, you know, acknowledged something or I should have added some commentary to it. It's totally off the subject of branding and I'm sorry, but the, it's just <laughs> no, it's no, no. such a huge tool for new streamers. And I, I can't stress pushing content and saving your VODs and watching your own stuff. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I don't think it's actually too far removed from branding because, you know, like DN said here, branding develops over time. And I think the best way to develop your branding is to start streaming and then figure out what you like, uh, how your brand can work with your stream, because that's, again, the whole point of it. Um, mm -hmm. And that only comes over time. You can't like plan it all out ahead of time and just have it work for a year because naturally your brand's going to evolve over time. So I, I definitely agree with you, what you said. And just for so many reasons, having your VODs on, reviewing VODs, self-review and anything is amazing. So um, yeah. definitely make sure you're doing that for branding, for personality, identity, everything. It helps I mean, with and that. especially people pushing to get affiliate, it has to be on to get affiliate. Twitch will not touch you if they can't go back and watch your VODs because they can't verify that you're not yep. some TOS violating lunatic who just happened to get 50 followers before they caught it. Yeah, and we, uh, won't, we won't touch you either. That's, that's If you don't have VODs on, you won't get sponsorships, you won't get chat. affiliate, you won't, yeah. You, you want Green to touch you, I promise. <laughs> All right, All right. <laughs> this has gotten weird. Um, Muffer asked a question. He um, said, I don't know if I missed this. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, was, I threw green all off there. You go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, he said, I don't know if I asked this. How'd you lock down the America theme? I, I did touch it. Any particular yeah. influences on your love of the country? I did touch it. It's uh, the long and short of it is, is that I grew up in a household with military and police, and that kind of stuff. So it was just something I was always passionate about. And I found a way to incorporate it into my channel. But if you go back and listen to the podcast, you can hear all about where I went on a whole tirade about it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I think that is most of the questions. We are now 43 minutes over the scheduled end time of the podcast. So I Before think you have the new record as longest interview show um, in 35 episodes. So congrats to Snoobog for a new record. Um, I think we should go ahead and wrap it up, guys. I know there's still lots of questions. So if you have any at all, please join the stream key discord. Um, that's our call-in show discord, but also just for the show in general. Um, Snoop will be in there to answer questions. I will as well. Mm -hmm. And you can join our show tomorrow too, if you'd like. New records, so, yeah. Yep, he's, he's, his brand in full effect right there. Um, anyway, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. So I thank you all for coming out to the show. I hope you will join the Discord and uh, you can get more information on past episodes as well as just help with your own stream there. Snoop Hog, my man, thank you so much for coming on. Where thank can people you. find you? What should they know about you? It is Snoop Hog TV on everything, everything. I stream tonight. I will be live around 10 o'clock p.m. Normally it's nine on my days off, but I have to pick up my wife. <laughs> so, you know, I, that's the other thing. Priority family, always, always family. Right. But um, seriously, you can find me on Snoop Hog TV, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, subs get Snapchat. I mean, all the fun stuff. But normally I'm um, 1230 Eastern time during the week. My schedule rotates. The best way to figure it out is to get on Discord or Twitter. I promise I'm live at the same times. It just my days off rotate. Right. Cool. Go check him out, guys. If you're listening after the fact, he'll be in the show notes on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, etc. Um, really great episode. We will be handing the stream off to Doc right after this. So stick around. He's doing some fallout for the next week or two or three, I think, actually, um, with like 100 mods or something. So pretty cool stuff. And we will see you guys tomorrow for the Colin Show with Veloc, of course, and Tom Cruise Mom Shoes, who is another new sponsored My streamer. My favorite game, chat. <laughs> <laughs> and you can call in via the Discord and join that show too. So even more reason to join the Discord. Uh, yes. I will see you guys next week. And yeah, hope you have a good time. Thank see you ya. guys all so much. And I will check out Broforce. Be sure to hang out with Doc. <laughs> see ya. Bye.